Some constellations like Orion wow you with bright stars and flashy outlines, and then you've got dimmer ones like Cancer the Crab. Don't let that fool you though, this constellation has a lot to see. This short video will help you to find Cancer and show you some of its best objects, including a remarkable star cluster and a beautiful double star. This is Touring the Night Sky with Zachary Singer. Ordinarily, these constellation videos start off with how to find our constellation, but we're going to reverse that this time and show you Cancer's targets up front. I've got a trick up my sleeve, and it's that our first object, the Beehive Cluster, will help you find the constellation. We'll use two brighter constellations to get our bearings, Gemini and Leo, both of which contain terrific targets too. If you're not familiar with them, here are some links, and I'll post them in the comments and at the end of this video. The Beehive is also known as Messier 44, or just M44 for short. Like many of our targets in these videos, it's an open cluster. It's a pretty bright one, too, bright enough that you can see it naked eye. Under a dark country sky, the Beehive presents a conspicuous patch of light. It can be quite startling until you realize what you're looking at. More than once, I've been out observing with experienced folks, and they've said, What the heck is that? Then, when I say it's the Beehive, there's a general Oh! Once you put binoculars on it, some of its individual stars become visible, even under a suburban sky. You'll see much more in a small, rich field telescope. In my little 80mm scope from light polluted Denver, I can still see dozens of stars. Something like this. And that's with moonlight messing things up, too. Your view will improve greatly if you take your telescope out to a dark sky, and then it will be closer to the view you see here. At the north end of the crab's outline, you'll find the double star Iota Cancri. It looks like one star to your unaided eye, but in a telescope, even a small one, you can see it is actually two stars. Depending on your equipment and the sky's clarity, the pair can appear orange and white, cream and lavender, or golden blue as you see in this photo, shot with the 80 millimeter. As pretty as they are to look at, here's a mind bender for you. Even though they appear so close together on your screen here, or in your telescope's eyepiece, astronomers have determined that they are about 70 times farther from each other than far away Pluto is from our Sun. At such a distance apart, it will take more than 60,000 years for them to orbit each other just once. Hi guys, my YouTube buddies have reminded me to ask you to subscribe and hit the like button if you're enjoying this video. It'll help me make more, too. Thanks! Now that we've seen some cool stuff in Cancer, the question is how to find it. Here's what you'll see from roughly 30 to 50 degrees north latitude, that is, most of North America, Europe, Northern Africa, and Asia. Throughout March and April, you'll find Cancer high overhead as you look towards the south around 9 p.m., perhaps a fist width or so to the east or the west, but pretty close to the highest point in the sky. There are other times you can look too, and we'll get to that in a moment. You're going to need to be under a dark country sky, or at least way out in the suburbs, to see the stars of Cancer with unaided vision, because while these stars are bright enough to be seen when you're away from the city, they're not bright enough to prevent being washed out by urban light pollution. The big trick, even in the country, is to realize that Cancer's stars are hardly dazzling, but its neighbors, the stars of Leo and Gemini, are. If we look for those constellations first, will find Cancer easily, because it lies right in the middle of them. You can find Gemini to the west, to your right as you look southward, by looking for two very bright stars, Castor and Pollux, close together. They're about half the width of your fist when you hold it up to the sky. If you look carefully, you'll see the rest of Gemini, its parallel lines of stars indicating the twins, but realistically, Castor and Pollux, the easy ones, are all you need. Leo is about 40 degrees to the east, about four full widths of your fist. Look for the bright star Regulus. It's about as bright as Castor and Pollux are. Then notice the backwards question mark that makes up the mane of Leo the lion, just to make sure that you're in the right spot. Out in a dark sky, the beehive will glow for you, halfway between Regulus and Pollux. Easy peasy. Once you have that, look closely and you'll see Cancer's outline. Here's a tip. While some constellations resemble the things they're after, Taurus the bull shape seems to have horns, for example, 
Trying to imagine that we get a crab from a triangle with a straight line on top is a bit silly. I've always found cancer much easier to find when I imagine it as a mandolin. The lower triangle is the instrument's body, and the line on top is its neck. And now, to help you remember this, which star is sitting there at the top? It's our old friend Iota, the double. Now you know why I showed you the beehive and Iota first. So, one last thing. I promised other times you can look for Cancer the Crab, and here are some other times when you'll find Leo, Cancer, and Gemini high in the south like this. Keep in mind, though, that Leo and Gemini are very easy to spot, even in the city, when you're familiar with them. They'll always be landmarks for you, even when they're not exactly in this position. They're worth learning more about, both as a way to find Cancer and for the cool things in them as well, more clusters, double stars, and galaxies. So don't forget to check out those videos too. Clear skies, my friends. <laughs>